Eddie Stedman, Eddie Talley, Brian Long, and Mickey Mabry bringing you another game tonight between the Eagles of Summertown and the Waynesboro High School Wildcats. The Eddie and Brian pregame show is brought to you by TNM Video, Eddie Talley, and Charlie Mabry. If you're planning a reunion, a wedding, a party, or a speech and want a videotape of the event, then you should contact Charlie or Eddie. We'll make one copy or an unlimited number of copies of your event. So for all your video needs, call 964-3324 or 964-2421. All right, Ed and Brian, what do you think about tonight's ball game? Well, Charlie, we're coming here tonight with Waynesboro coming into the Summertown's home stand and what has become one of the traditional rivalries of the district. <laughs> Brian, what's the rank of both teams coming in here tonight? Well, Eddie, uh, Wayne County girls, they're 13-3 and three overall and 4-1 and one in the district. And I think they're ranked about number 5 or 6 in the state. I'm not sure right off. And Summertown girls are 6-6 six and six overall with a 2-3 and three <coughs> district mark, which ties them for third with Clifton and chasing Wayne County. They're number 2 right now. That puts a great deal of importance on tonight's ball game for both teams. Uh, Waynesboro looking to keep pace with Collinwood. Their only loss in the district being to the powerful Collinwood girls team who's rated number one in the state. Summertown, meanwhile, is in third place in the district, and they're trying to hold that spot because with a five-team district, the top three automatically get to advance to the region, and with uh, the and the bottom two will then have a one-game playoff to see who automatically advances then. So, so it's very important that Summertown maintain a good record in order that they can avoid having to play that one game to make sure they can go to the district. We want that automatic berth if possible. What are some of the strengths that Summertown has, Brian? Well, Summertown's strengths right now, I think, are uh, our uh, inside game. Last couple of games, we've got big, strong games out of Leanne Corbin inside. Last game against Lewis County, she scored 22 points. But then we also got uh, good balance from the outside with 22 points from Shelly Curtis also. We'll need that kind of balance to stay with this fine Wayne County team tonight. Another one of their strengths that I've noticed is uh, Vanessa Bailey and Shelly both rebound and they run the floor well, which gives us a good opportunity to make a transition and get some easy baskets before the defense can get set up like that. And that's an awful valuable uh, quality to add to a team. What are some of the weaknesses that you look in to this year's team, Brian? Well, summertime, we're, we're, we're real young, uh, inexperienced. There's a lot of girls seeing their first varsity action this year being thrown into the, to the district wars right off the bat, I guess you might say. And uh, we're small, we're, we ain't very tall. Our girls are, you know, we're hustlers, but we just ain't got the height that a lot of these teams have got. Another thing that uh, we want to point out is once again that Summertown started off the year with Angie Ferguson playing point guard. And as you know, after the Spring Hill game, she did injure her arm. And Angie's doing pretty much well in her road to recovery right now. But she won't be able to play more basketball for us. And she was our primary ball handler. And with her out, We've had to move Shelly Curtis to the point, and really we are limited in having experienced ball handlers there. We have some girls that have the ability, they just haven't developed that as of yet. So that's one of the weaknesses that we have to point to is the possible ball handling problems we might run into. This Waynesboro team, as you said, is rated in the top ten in the state, and their only loss being to Collinwood, and we happened to go see that game that night. Brian, what were some of the strengths that you saw during that game that uh, Waynesboro exhibited? Well, I think Waynesboro is a, a extremely balanced team. They they don't get a lot of points from one girl necessarily. They've got three or four girls that maybe score 10 to 15 points a game every night, and, and that's just hard to beat when you've got that kind of balance in your team. They're, uh, they're experienced. They were a state tournament finalist last year. The Wayne County and Collinwood played for the state championship. They've got a lot of girls back, two or three, I think three starters back and uh they've got good shooters you can't pack it in on on wayne county if you pack it in and play a tight two three zone they've got the girls that can burn three pointers up some of the weaknesses that i thought they might have off that is the the bench play coming off of there they're not really deep when your starter goes out you can really tell a difference if it's a certain starter you know such as their point guard or one of their high scoring post players Another thing, they have a tendency to go to sleep in the middle of the game, so to speak. They, they just get into a, a run where they don't score many points and let the other team get a 
uh, a little run on him, get a, a lead. But one thing that impresses me very much about this Waynesboro girls team and what I've seen is that they never get rattled. If they're 20 down, it doesn't matter to them. They feel confident that they can come back and cut that lead, and we've seen them do that time and time again. That's, they maintain real good composure and patience in running their offense and trying to uh, achieve a victory. Some of the key players for Waynesboro girls tonight is going to be their point guard, Heather Pratter. Now, she's a sophomore point guard. Last year as a freshman, she made the all-district team, and she's real experienced. She doesn't, as we say, get real, and in my opinion, she's one of the top-rated point guards in the district and possibly in the state, Brian. Yeah, yeah you're right, Eddie. She's one of the top players in the area, and uh, you was talking about Summertown, uh, Wayne County team keeping their composure. I think a lot of this goes to Heather Prater. She's, uh, she's just a heady, steady, smart. She just seems to always have things in control. Another player that we can look to see a lot of action from is Benita Wharton. She'll be in the post position. She was a fairly young and experienced player last year, but she came in, she played well last year, and this year she also has proven to be a, one of the more dominating scoring forces in the district. Another player returning that's a key to, in their starting lineup is Marcia Davis, and she plays the wing position. Doesn't score a lot of points, but she puts the ball where it has to be put, in, and she has been known to break into the point column and, you know, in double figures several times this year. She's one of the unsung players of this Wayne County team, I think, Eddie. She, like you said, she don't score a lot, but she's uh, she's the, the do-it-all player they've got. She rebounds a while. She has scored a few. She has two, handles the ball, passing. Just uh, good defense. Most of all, she's just a good, a good strong, all-around player. What do you think the keys to tonight's ball game is going to be for Summertown to win this ball game, Brian? What are they going to try to do out there, and what must they do? We've got to handle the ball, Eddie. We can't we can't have 20 turnovers and win this game. They're gonna they're gonna press us all night, just like Collingwood girls did the other night. The only difference is I think this Wayne County team might be a little bit quicker man for man than Collinwood was. And when we break the press, we've got to take advantage of the scoring opportunities if they pre present themselves. If we've got a two-on-one, we've got to lay it up. If it's not there, pull it out, work the clock, pass it around, and get a good shot. Another thing that I've, I've noticed is Waynesboro is a very strong rebounding team, and that's one of the things that Summertown really doesn't excel in. They play, Summertown usually plays a zone defense, and as you know, you don't have individual blockout assignments in a zone defense, and the way Waynesboro crashes the boards and gets there, that'll be a key. Summertown must rebound, at least match Waynesboro's rebound total night in order to win. Well, we've got to really scrap on the boards. We need to limit them to as, as few a shots as possible as always, but it, it'll be a real tough test tonight playing Waynesboro. Waynesboro will, as you said, try to press the, uh, pretty much the entire game. They like to go up and down, get into a running gun, up-tempo game, whereas Summertown, it would be in their best advantage tonight, as their strategy has been all year, to try to control the tempo and slow the game down and work, you know, to achieve a good shot. But the key to it is, is going to be they're going to have to shoot well when they get those shots. Obviously, patience and achieving that shot is one thing, but they're going to have to shoot over 50% in order to stay with this Waynesboro team tonight, in my opinion. I agree with you right there, Eddie. We get the shots, we're going to have to make them because they're going to be shots going to come hard tonight. Also, I think we have to look for a dominating game from Shelly Curtis. We've got to have that outside threat established real early in order that we might open up the low post game for both Lee Ann and Vanessa Bailey underneath there. What do you think Waynesboro's going to try to do tonight, and what, what must they try to do to, to win this ball game? Well, like you said, Waynesboro's going to play run and gun, as a lot of people call it. They're going to press, try to create turnovers and score off their defense. They're going to their guards are going to really try to control the tempo of the game, uh, penetration, uh, penetrate for the jump shot or the layup or a dish off for an easy score for one of their teammates. Uh, to me, that'll be a big key for Summertown there is trying to keep the guards from Wayne County to penetrate in the lane and create an easy scores for their teammates. Well, that's the way we see the things stack up in this important district game for both teams. Back to you, Charlie. This has been the Eddie and Brian pregame show brought to you by TNM Video of Summertown. Remember, if you need a video of a reunion, wedding, party, or speech, see Charlie or Eddie for your video needs.
Channel 10 Television Sports Department welcomes you to another Summertown High School basketball game. Tonight's game brought to you by D&D Grocery Center, High Knoll Landscaping, Summertown Floral and Nursery, Community Bank and Trust, Scott's Grocery, Murdison's Garage, Hughes Grocery and Cash and Carry, Ray's Vinyl Construction, Bird's Insulation, and TNM Video, and Countryside Good and Plenty Restaurant. Proud to bring you tonight's game between the Wildcats of Waynesboro and the Summertown High School Eagles. It's time for the starting lineups, and now we'll go to Eddie Stedman and the public dress announcer for the starting lineups. Seems to be having a good crowd on hand for the nice ball game. Southern House side almost packed already. For the Waynesboro Wildcats, the starting lineup number 12 is Ginger Hastings. <coughs> Number 14 is the point guard, a sophomore, Heather Pratter. Number 23, a wing player, Marcia Davis. Number 35 is Benita Warden, a strong post player underneath the basket. And number 41 rounds out the starting lineup, and that's Christy Skelton. Lights will now go down, a spotlight turned on. It's a Summertown Eagle S will now be introduced. To... Number 33 is Clarissa Miller. She'll be playing the wing position tonight. Double zero is the wing player, our junior, Amy Blackwood. 23, a junior point guard, Shelly Curtis. Number 44, the freshman post player for Summertown, Vanessa Bailey. And number 55, the junior post player, Leanne Corbin. Tonight's game brought to you by Burleson's Garage, Larry Burleson, the owner. Larry has Union 76 products and all major brands of oil. We offer a full line of mechanical repairs with 24-hour record service, and business and home phone are listed in the phone directory. Larry is open six to five daily except Wednesday and Sunday. That's Burleson's Garage in Summertown. Well, it's about tip-off time. The Wayne's County girls are already on the floor. Looks like number 35, Benita Worthen, is going to be in the center jump for the Wayne County Wildcats along with Vanessa Bailey for the Summertown Eagles. This is the first meeting of the year. Ball's up. Tip goes to Wayne County. Brought off at number 23, Marcia Davis. Over to the point guard, Heather Pratter. Right wing, back to Pratter. The 25-foot three-pointer, no good. Ball comes off the board by Skelton. Skelton on the left wing to Hastings. Hastings puts up one, no good. Bailey brings her off. There you see right off hand that Waynesboro's not afraid to put the ball up. They come out and they jack it up right away against that 2-3 zone that the Eagles opened up in. That's going to be a problem, man. If they start hitting that outside shot, we're going to have a problem uh, guarding them tonight. So Waynesboro's opened up into a 2-3 zone defense herself. Be important for Summertown to establish some outside threat as we get the ball out of bounds. On. And suddenly we have a five-second call as we took too long to get the play organized there. So it'll be Wayne County's ball with no score in the first quarter here as Heather Platter dribbles up into the front court here. We need to minimize our floor mistake, so we've got to take advantage of every break we can get. This being a team ranked in the top ten of the state has been all year. Over what? to Platter, Platter in the corner. Out 23, Marcia Davis puts up about a 20-foot set shot. Two to nothing with seven minutes remaining first period. Waynesboro opened up into a 2-2-1 two, two, zone pressure. We were able to break the press, dribble down the floor, get a shot out of it. A foul's going to be called on number 41. That's Christy Skelton. That'll be her first foul, team foul number one. Shelly Curtis will be going to a line to attempt the two free throws to, on that shot. I have to say, Summertown girls are playing a little quicker pace than I anticipated they would before they started this game. Well, we pointed out in the pregame show as Shelly nails the first of her two free throws. It's going to be important to see how Summertown breaks the press. That time they held it quite well coming down the floor. What, 
couple of quick passes, and Shelly had it wide open, and luckily we came away with a foul then. Yeah, I'd like to have Shelly on the free throw line all night longer with open jumpers. Right, right. Over to Prater. Prater on the left wing to Hastings. Hastings guarded closely by Miller. Back over in the corner to Davis. Davis puts up a set shot. It's no good. Taken off the board by Wortham, and Wortham foul by number 55. Leanne Corbin picks up the first foul. Double zero. Amy Blackwood picks up the first foul of the night for Summertown. That'll send Benita Wortham to the free throw line. Wayne Sparrow worked the ball very well that time to get an open set shot from Marcia Davis, who earlier nailed that long shot. And didn't make the shot, but once again, as we pointed out, rebounding. Benita Warden crashing the board that time. A very key to this ball game tonight. Wayne County had three girls in the lane right around the ball when uh, Warden got the rebound. Summertown's going to have to try to stop that. Summertown into Miller. Miller back to Curtis. Under a full court press. Drill was up the middle of the floor. About a 10-foot jump shot. Give it to her. That's fine play by Shelly that time, but watch how quick Waynesboro comes back and tries to attack down there. They don't give you any time to rest. As they work the ball around very patiently, and then they find that three-pointer. Heather Prater, one of the premier shooters in the district, nails that three. Wayne County really spreading us out on defense, working the ball. Quick passes around the zone. You'll get an open shot all night. Curtis working across the 10-second line. We have an offensive foul on Shelly Curtis. Marcia Davis stabbed his position as Curtis went, went for the corner, had her blocked out. That's Shelly's first foul tonight. Nothing critical right offhand, but we really can't afford to have her in foul trouble tonight. Well, you're right there, Eddie. we got to have Shelly in the game. Uh, over on the low post to Wharton. Wharton puts one up. No good. Taken off the board by Skelton. Taken off the board by Wharton, and Wharton lays it in. 9-4, to 4, 5-39, first period. Wayne County's attacking the boards. They're staying right on it. They don't quit when the ball goes up on the glass. That time they got three shots to get, uh, get to make one. And if you give any team three shots underneath the basket, eventually they're either going to make the shot or you're going to be forced to foul them to prevent it. And somehow you've got to do a better job of getting a body on somebody. They're really working the ball well, Waynesboro. They're not dribbling much, passing the ball. Nation puts up about a 15-foot jump shot, brings her back off. Skelton puts up a 10-foot jumper. 11 to 4. Wayne County's quickness is showing up, I think, down here on the offense end of the court for them. Maybe that's part of the, on the rebounding. We, we can't uh, box them out because Wayne County is so quick they're going around the box. We have a foul on the inbound pass. Marcy Davis picks up her first person of the night. I believe that foul went on Shelly Curtis of Summerhound, which oh. is a critical foul that time. Shelly reached in after making the turnover. That's her second one on the night. So. Waynesboro once again has several little layups. They just don't quite go down. But that's the Bailey finally drags a rebound for us. Somehow very important. We need to score on this possession here as Waynesboro has built up a seven-point lead, 11 to four, with 4:37 remaining in the first quarter. Bailey puts up a 10-footer in and out, coming off the board to Wharton. Wayne County on the run. They, they get it out quick, a half-court outlet pass, and they're down there ready to score already. Marcia Davis, 25-foot set, three more. Uh, carries the lead to 10 with 4.15. Uh, Miller, another turnover. Bailey. We have a timeout on the floor, 4.14 remaining, 14-4. to 4. Summertown Floral and Nursery, Lynn Gibson, owner. We specialize in floral arrangements of both live and silk flowers. We have balloon bouquets as well as shrubs, mating plants, shade trees, and topsoil. We carry a full line of trees. The concrete fountains, bird baths, picnic tables will decorate any yard. This spring, we have a large supply of mulch for your plants. Summertown Floral and Nursery offer free delivery to area hospitals and funeral homes. Also a member of FAS Wire Services. 964-2161. And after the timeout by Coach Bobby Warwick of Summertown, Summertown has shifted into a man-to-man -man defense, and so good for Waynesboro to spread it out and try to beat uh, one off the dribble. Has had a penetrates and looks to dish off. 
and get it back over to Manita Warden who takes up a shot, bottom from about five feet out. A pretty play by Waynesboro, exercising patience until they got the shot they wanted, immediately going back into their zone press. Well, Wayne County's getting what they wanted by Summertown switching to a man-to-man -man there, Ed. I believe, I'm really surprised that Wayne County is not playing a man-to-man themselves, Brian. They get more, much more pressure that way, but we're, they're giving Summertown fists right now as Heather Prater gets a steal, drives the length of the floor, Throws up a two shots, doesn't go. Skelton rebounds, don't go. Finally, Shelly Curtis gets a rebound. And we have a foul called. Uh, or was it just a violation going out of bounds? It's out of bounds call there, Eddie. Okay. okay. <laughs> Summertown set the inbound. Curtis into Bailey. Bailey back to Curtis. Looks like it's up to Shelly to work the ball up the floor. Has three guards on her. Somebody should be open over to Miller. Bad pass intercepted by Warden. Wayne County bringing her back. Rather, let the ball get out of out of her hands. Back to Summertown. Summertown's not having the press like they get against Collinwood. We're throwing the ball backward against the Collinwood team on our last telecast. They were looking ahead when the pass was made, trying to find the open girl down the floor. And that's that's one of the keys to the press. Try not to throw the ball backward and continue to pass the ball instead of dribbling through it. You're right there. We, one thing I've noticed, I think our passes are a little bit too long right now, too. We're, we're going away from the ball instead of coming back to meet it when somebody's throwing it to us. Shelly Curtis drove the length of the floor then and was fouled by number 23, Marcia Davis. And that's Marcia's first foul. It's, we have a host of substitutions getting ready to come in for Wayne County. Number 53 is Katrina Rochelle. Number 11 is Mian Grinder. And number 54 is Lagina Martin. And also for Southern High getting set to come in will be Bridget Davenport. So we got four new ball players on. Amy Black will we'll take a seat for Summer High and get some instructions from Coach Bobby Wyatt. Shelly makes the first of two free throws. Second one up, it's good. 16 to six with 2.59 to go in the first quarter in favor of Waynesboro. Waynesboro brings the ball down over in the middle of Warden. Warden puts up about a 16-footer. It's no good, taking off the board. Put back up, taking off the board again. By Warden again, one more time by Warden. Ball coming off, Waynesboro gets it again. Butler this time, over the grinder, back to Butler, in the middle of Warden. Warden turns, trying to laser in. Nice move, nice pass by Wayne County right there. That was a, a well-executed play on their behalf. Turn over, give it back to Warden. Five-foot jump shot, 20 to six. Southern County really having some problems with this pass here. We gotta get, get a little respect from Wayne They realize that we're having problems breaking and give them the credit. They're putting on some little extra added pressure here. We need to lay it up on them a couple of times and score off of it. If we wish to do that, I believe it loosened it up a little bit. That's another floor mistake by Summertown. Amy Blackwood, double zero, will check back in. Carissa Miller will take a bet. Seat well, on the bench there. Just a little indecisive on what we want to do, it looks like, Eddie. But it, and like you said earlier, it's kind of surprising after the way Summertown handled the Collinwood pressure last week that we would react this way. Into Wayne County. Wayne County outside the wharf. Into the high post. Gordon takes steps. Three second violation. 151 remaining first period, 20 to six. Waynesboro's running a uh, double low post offense down there with two wings and a point guard. Try, that's an offense that's set up to try to get the ball inside, much like the Summertown boys run, to be a little more familiar with it. But Shelly Curtis, let's go at three, and finally we get on the scoreboard with a fine looking three point by Shelly. Maybe that loosen up that zone, that let us make a few more passes there. I hope it does, Eddie, I hope it does. Wayne County quickly back down the floor, get the ball inside to Katrina Rochelle, and she's fouled by Leanne Corbin. That's Leanne's first personal foul, and that's the fourth team foul for the Summertown girls. On the next foul, Wayne County will be going to the line to shoot the one and one. Somebody's missing assignment. Bonita Warden just lays one in. Many times the teams go to a 2-3 zone out, on out-of-bounds plays to prevent plays like that, but most of the time Southern Pound plays a zone, since they're in a man-to-man, -man, they got a little confusion that time on who had who, especially with these substitutions that Wayne County's put in. And that, that caused the problem that time. And a high post to Bailey, one rims in, rims out. Comes back out to Collinwood, they run. Wayne County's running in the grinder. 10-foot jump, no good. Warthen brings the ball off the board. Back over the grinder. Takes steps. 
58 seconds remain in the first period. 22 to, is that eight? That's nine, nine. I believe, Charlie. 22 to nine. Okay. We need to buy a bulb or two, I believe. <laughs> Wayne County keeping their people fresh, substituting in and out, playing this uh, pressure defense. Looks like it's up to Shelley to bring the ball across. Don't have any help. Then another turnover. Picked up by Davis. Davis working 30 feet outside, 45 seconds. Over to Butler. Butler puts up a bomb from 25. They come back, gets her own rebound. Over to Davis. One thing, one thing I've noticed about the press that they're doing, Summer Hound is not putting anybody in the middle of the floor as they did against Collingwood. Vanessa Valley was running around the middle of the floor, positioned there by Coach Wyatt. And if you watch down here, we wind up with four girls within about 15 feet of each other, and you just can't get no space in, and you can't can't get open to make passes to even attempt to break the press. We have a foul on me and Grinder for the Wayne County girls. That's her first personal, third team foul for the Wayne County Wild Kittens. We got 25 seconds to go. You think someone has set up and try to hold for one, Brian? I believe they will. It's, it's hard to say. I think we need to, I think, try to slow this game down a little bit, but we immediately go to the basket. <laughs> that wasn't a bad shot. It just no. didn't quite go down for Leanne that time. There's seven seconds left. Waynesboro looking to add on to the lead. It's three seconds, two, one. Rochelle turns on the miss, and the quarter comes to an end with Summertown trailing 22 to nine. Hughes Grocery and Hughes Cash and Carry, Wayne and Linda Hughes are the owners. These stores offer a full line of groceries, gas, diesel fuel, and kerosene. They feature a hot deli with hot coffee, sausage and biscuits, ham and biscuits, and corn dogs, and we make sandwiches to order. We also have pocket knives, gifts, and toys. The cash and carry market on Highway 20 is also a deer checking station. We have video rentals, three for $5. Wayne and Linda open 4.30 to 6, six days a week, and nine to six on Sunday. Second quarter is set to begin. Curtis in the Blackwood, back to Curtis. Summertown has a starting unit back on the floor. Waynesboro looks like they shifted to a 1-3-1 defense. Coach David Bird really utilizing his strategies tonight and pulling out all stops and trying to make some confusion on the Summertown part, and that's really happening. Shelly Curtis lets go of an air ball that time. Gordon misses a five-foot jump shot, long rebound. Off to Butler, we have a foul on Shelly Curtis. That's her third personal. That's trouble, Eddie. Yeah, that's going to be a real problem for Summerham because, as we said at the top of the show, Shelly's had to move into the point guard position. She's her only other true ball handler, and now she's got three fouls. She's going to have to set out the rest of this entire first half. Uh, I guess they'll move Carissa Miller to the point, be my guess on that, Brian. What do you think? Yeah, I'd say that's what we're going to do, but it's going to be it's going to be tough for Carissa. She's going to have to have some help out of her teammates. They can't run off and leave her down here. Yeah, that's one thing about it. We're going to have to set up and try to work the ball with passing rather than rely on ball handling, Bill. That's the best way to work it anyway. But Wayne County got a flow of substitutions in there. I only see two starters out of the lineup in there, but... Really, when they come in, you don't see a lot of difference if you mix them in with those starters. Right, you're right. Chris right. Miller put up a 10-foot jump shot. 23 to 11. Butler puts one up and gets her own rebound. Skelton loses the ball. Picked up a Bailey. Bailey running the length of the floor. Lays one up. It's blocked. Off of Bailey. Wayne County ball. Well, we're getting out-rebounded bad down here, Eddie. They're getting three or four shots every time down the floor. I think that goes back to the quickness advantage they have on us, Brian. They're beating us to that spot. We've got to we got to do a better job on that. You can't give a team four and five shots a lick, or you wind up fouling them as we just did there. It looks like a number 24 for them. Amy Butler just into the game. She drove into the lane. She was fouled that time by Bridget Davenport, and she'll go to the line to be shooting two with... 6.38 remain in the second quarter and Wayne County holding to a 23 to 11 advantage. First free throw is up and it is nothing but the net. Once again, they have a good free throw shooting team from Wayne County. I, I don't know what their system is, but they always have one, Brian. Always. They, they make them year in, year out. You 
Wayne County's not going to lose the game because they missed free throws. Well, with jump ball, alternating possession, the ball goes to Wayne County. 6.25 remaining in the first half, and scores Wayne County 24, Summer County 11. Waynesboro set to put in bounds in their own backcourt. Summertown going out about half court to meet them. Summertown has switched to the 1-2-1-1 one, one, one half court trap that they normally employ late in the ball game when they're trying to get a steal. Coach Bobby Wyatt trying to do anything to shake up Waynesboro. They don't seem to be rattled as they get the ball in to number 53, Katrina Rochelle. And she shows it. She could be a starter on many teams in the district, but for Waynesboro, she has to back up some of the more talented players they have. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what her grade is, but I'd say her year is yet to come. She'll probably be the, the scorer for them a year or two down the road, I'd say. Had a foul on Butler. That's their fourth team foul. They'll go to the one and one on the next person. Davenport has the ball blocked. Traveling. We're getting kind of bunched up on our offense down here. We had three girls in the same general area that time, and when you do that, that gives the defense really a, a method to collapse on you and double team you, and that's what happened to Bridget that time. She got in traffic, wasn't able to handle the pressure there. Miller drags the rebound around, and she's bringing it down for Summer House. We set up. We really need to establish some sort of offensive threat on this possession here. Oh, we got a mistake. In the grinder, grinder goes length of the floor, and she's fouled by number 33, Teresa Miller. That's her first personal. You know, last game, uh, it, I really couldn't tell that much difference without Angie on the floor, but tonight I can see a, a big difference not having her in there, and especially since Shelly Curtis went to the bench with three fouls. You just don't lose your two ball handlers and uh, uh, big play girls and be able to stay competitive. We have a mass of substitutions that came in as a, number 11, Mia Ann Grinder, is going to the line. She shoots the first of a one one doesn't go down, but Manita Warden back into the ball game, puts up her, gets the rebound, puts in the 12th point on the night. She's really off to a good start, and there she is hustling for a save. Back on the front of that press, and there they go, create another turnover there. Number 14 for Summertown is Lisa Pilkington. She comes in, gives Vanessa Bailey a breather. And let's see who all Waynesboro's got back in. Number 14 be Heather Pratter. Number 12 is Ginger Hastings. She's back in. Manita Warden, 35, we've indicated she's in. So they basically have their starting lineup back on the floor once again. Christy Skelton, 41, and Marcia Davis, 23. So Coach David Bird really working his players well, keeping them fresh, and it's really going to show a difference in having a bench like that. Ginger Hastings picks up her first personal, but I'm saying Lisa Pilkington to the line to shoot the one and one. 28 to 11 with 5 11 first period. First one's up, and it's good. 28 12. Lisa Late. Pilkington at the line, try to complete both shots. He's at the front rim, back rim, rolls off. We have a foul on Leanne Corbin on the rebound. That's Leanne's second personal. I believe they call that foul on number 10, Bridget Davenport. Leanne was in the area. I believe she fouled her, but they gave it to Lee, uh, Bridget that time. Well, I haven't got one right yet. They won't let me <laughs> call the ball game. I guess they can go ahead and do it. <laughs> Might take note that in the Hornwall game earlier this week, Lisa Pilkin got to see some action due to foul trouble of some some of the older players, and she hit some clutch free throws down at the end for us there. Got a couple of rebounds and took a shot when we really needed some points to ice the ball game. She looks like an oncoming player. Yeah, she's been playing real well as of late, Eddie, as you said. But getting in these big games, getting this experience, it won't take you long to learn what you need to do. Leanne Corbin drives the lane that time, and she's fouled by number 41. Christy Skelton, that's her second foul. One of the few Waynesboro players in foul trouble because of massive substitution, but that's going to give her a spot on the bench as number 53, Katrina Rochelle, returns to the lineup. They won't see a big difference in there because Katrina's having a good game so, thus far now, but Leanne Corbin will be at the line and shoot two free throws for Summertown. Ball goes up, and she makes the first of the two there to give... Waynesboro has a 28 to 13 lead on us with 4.58 to go in the second quarter. Lee had second shot up, bouncing around, no good, taken off by Warthen. Wayne County on the attack. Over on the high post to Pratter, Pratter in the low post to Warthen. 
Puts one up, it's no good. Davenport comes off for the rebound. Tipped out of bounds. Summertown put in play. Miller set to be trigger into Blackwood. We've kind of slowed Wayne County down here a little bit. We need to start putting some points up on the board itself. They hadn't scored here in it seems like a minute or so. Miller working outside into Davenport. Stolen by Walton. We have the break going. Over to Prater. Prater length of the floor. Puts one up. It's good, but she travels. Leanne calls that travel. She's coming at her. Big girl on little girl. They can't get the ball inbound into Pilkington. One dribble. That will turn over. Carissa drops the ball out of bounds over to Wayne County. Waynesboro still in that press, and that's really giving Summerhounds a problem, especially since we have some relatively inexperienced players in there, and it really requires some good patient ball handling to break a press of their caliber there. But. Heather Pretter working the baseline, back outside to Davis. Marshall Davis throws up one, took it off the board by Blackwood. Blackwood running, cut off. Has the ball almost stolen, puts up a 10-foot jump shot. 28-15, four minutes, first half. Amy Blackwood showing some ability there. She hustles down, gets the rebound, and dribbles down the floor and forces up the shot. It goes down with two defenders on there. Fine hustle on her part. As Summerhouse starting to get a little run going them in here, settling down, getting more into their ball game. Blackwood drives the middle. The ball comes loose, picked up by Warden, and we have a foul called on this play. I see Amy, number 55. Amy Amy Lee Ann Corbin. Look at Amy Black. Was it Amy? Yeah. They picked it up? Okay. The church second. I couldn't figure out the ref's hand signal on that one. Yeah, we're having time fishing tonight. <laughs> Maybe before the night's over, we'll, we'll get in the flow. Number 25, Alicia Benefield has checked into the Summertown lineup. She'll replace Carissa Miller, and she, I guess she'll take over the point guard position now. Anita Wharton goes to the line to try to... Extend her double figures tonight. First one's off, no good, and Bailey brings the ball off the board for Summertown. Vanessa gets several rebounds, have a turnover, intercepted by Prater. Heather, length of the floor, it rolls out. Taken off by Blackwood. Another break. You're right, Brian. Waynesboro has been struggling as a bit a late on the offensive end, and they really have their starting lineup in there with the exception of Rochelle, who plays quite a bit. So, Summerhouse so doing against their starters. We, we forced up a bad shot that time. We need to take a little better, more patient shot when we get it. But Waynesboro runs the break. Davis shoots, doesn't make it, but gets her own rebound, and she's fouled. Uh, I couldn't pick out the one in the crowd. Let's wait for the ref's decision here. Number 14, Lisa Pilkington picks up a foul. We're not playing near as uh, much as a team as we have been the last couple of games. There's not near as much passing going on on the Summertown end as I've seen in the past few games. Davis puts the first free throw up, and she makes it. That's that, six points on the night for her so far. That may be due also to that pressure defense being played, Brian. The, you, it cuts into them passing lanes sometimes like that. And yeah, yeah. Play, players often panic and try to take matters in their own hands, and that results in a lot of turnovers. Got a bunch of bodies on the floor, but no, number 12. Hasty yeah. picked her up, drives the length of the floor, and lays her in. Yeah. down turns right around, throws the ball away. Yeah. Summerhouse really frustrated here. So Coach Bobby Wire is going to take a timeout with a score being 32 to 15, 245 remain in the second quarter. Community Bank and Trust would like to take this opportunity to let the people of Lawrence County know that we appreciate our customers. The Community Bank and Trust offers a full line of banking services with competitive rates of interest on all money market and certificate of deposit accounts, as well as low interest rates on all types of loans. We invite you, the people of Lawrence County, to visit any of our three convenient locations. So for personalized service, come see the friendly folks at Community Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Plays back in, Wayne County into Hastings. Hastings drives the line, puts one up, it's no good. Ball bad around, long rebound, come off for Marshall Davis. They feed on the high post. To Rochelle, Rochelle lays one up and in. Wayne County just keeps tipping, 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 and slapping the rebound around until one of their players are able to pick it up. 
Summer has went back into a 2-3 zone and tried to help out with some of those rebounds there. But on a turnover on the inbounds pass, Amy Blackwood reaches in. That's her third foul now. So Summer now really mounting up some foul trouble. That's Amy's third. She'll be, uh, no, we're going to leave Amy in there. Number 25, Alicia Benfield checks out. It's number 23, Shelly Curtis comes back in, and she has three fouls. Let's keep an eye on this move with 2.20 to go in the first half. Big Bobby, gamble. Bobby's going for all or nothing. Well, he's having such a problem getting the ball down the floor like that. He's hoping Shelly will provide that. And it's, a, it's a gamble like that any time you play a player with three fouls, but you can understand his position here trying to get a ball handler in with a little more experience than what we have. 36 to 15 with 220 and a half. Well, it's going against he'd, he'd rather lose with her out there than lose with her sitting over on the bench. Let's just see if Summertown gets the ball up the floor this trip. Curtis brings across the 10 second line, feeds Davenport. Davenport cut off the foul line at the baseline, and she's fouled by Heather Pratter. Heather picked up her first personal. So she'll go to the line to shoot the one and one. This is Bridget's first trip to the line tonight. It's short, taking off the Blackwood, taking off the Bailey. The ball rolls off out of bounds. Give it to Summertown. That's one of the few times tonight Summerhouse got a second opportunity on a shot. We actually got two offensive rebounds. Waynesville didn't block out well, and our girls crash the boards well. Shelly drives the baseline, puts up a 10-footer. It rolls in, a fine-looking shot. So. 36 to 17 with 150 and a half. Like Shelly's come out this, this quarter ridge, try to close that gap. Wayne County just shooting at will. They shoot until they make it. It's that three, four, five trip. Right. Can't win doing that. Can't win doing that. 16 points for Benita Warthen so far. Still in the second quarter. I'm really impressed with Benita Warthen tonight. She's, a, she's one of the better players we've seen this year in uh, girls' action. She really is pretty worked on her footwork this summer. She moves a lot more mobile this, than she did last year. She's kind of still moving last year. Shelly drives the lane. On a one-on-one -on -one move, goes up and makes a shot, but she's really came on, as we said, Brian, one of the more dominating players in the district this year. Shelly has 13 of the 18 for Summertown. Uh, one minute remaining in the half. Heather Pratter drives the middle, and they just get the ball off the board. Shelly just picked up her fourth personal. Are we reading wrong again? I believe we've got Blackwood with her fourth. Yep. Amy Blackwood picks up her fourth person. We have 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter of Waynesboro with a commanding 40 to 18 lead. Blackwood will be coming out if we get a chance on the buzzer here. Very nice and Mark. It's the first free throw with Miller, number 33. Carissa Miller will check in for Amy Blackwood. Nita really having a fine first half here. She's off to a real good start, shooting for her 18th point. The ball's up. She happens to miss at that time. Lee Ann Corbin drags a rebound for Summertown. Summertown may set up and try to hold it for one last shot here with it 45 seconds to go. But it'd be a good idea with the foul trouble we're in, I think, Kenny. It would be, Brian. We've got a Waynesboro Cincinnati has went to a man-to-man -man defense to try to force a turnover. We're moving the ball around. Vanessa shoots a shot from there lane, a fine-looking turnaround jump shot to give us 21 points for the half. Once again, that bulb's kind of throwing us off tonight. The score being 41-21. I'm sure Waynesboro's going to say and try to work it for the last shot with only about 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter here. They're starting to execute their play now, looking to get the ball inside. There goes in Rochelle. She puts up a shot, partially blocked. Bell for rebound. She retrieves it. Back to Prater. Fakes, dribble, shot. No good, but there's a foul on number 33, Carissa Miller, with four seconds left. That'll be Carissa's second foul. And send Heather Prater to the line. With only four seconds left. She'll be shooting two shots. First one's up. It's good. They haven't missed many. 
We'll check at halftime to see what the ratio is on the free throw shoot. Second one's good, 43-21. Into Curtis. As the first half comes in, in Wayne County 43, Summertown 21. D and D Grocery and Center. David and Diane Bailey is your one-stop shopping center. We open at 5:30 each day. We have a full line snack bar with pizza, old-fashioned hamburgers, and snacks. D and D is your headquarters for hunting, fishing license. And we're also a deer sex checking station. We have a full line of pipe fittings, nuts, and bolts. Pine Knoll Landscape in Summertown, Larry McCroy, the owner, features a full line and all types of residential and commercial landscaping and yard work. We'll plant any type of tree or shrub and do any type of yard work. Pine Knoll features grass seeding with a straw blower to cover your seeds. Larry appreci greatly appreciates your business. So for a free estimate of any type of yard work, call Larry McCrory, 964-3514. Give us a score and run down, Eddie, for the first half. All right, for Waynesboro, Ginger Hastings had four points, Heather Prater seven, Marcia Davis seven, Amy Butler two, Katrina Rochelle was six, and Benita Warden led the way with 15 points to give Waynesboro a total of 43 points. For Summertown, Leanne Corbett had one point, Vanessa Bailey two, Amy Blackwood two, Carissa Miller two, and Lisa Pilkington one. Shelly Curtis had 13 points to really provide the offensive spark that Summertown has had tonight. But let's also remember that Shelly Curtis has three fouls, Amy Blackwood has four fouls, so Summertown really in some foul trouble. While Waynesboro, the only Christy Skelton has two fouls. No other player has more than one. Waynesboro sends their starting five back out to start the second half. And so does Summertown with the exception of uh, Bridget Davenport in for uh, Blackwood. Summertown inbound. Shelly Curtis working the point for the Summertown girls. Uh, Wayne County's back in the 2-1-2 zone. Summertown working the ball around the perimeter. Throws the ball to the backcourt. Another floor mistake. Wayne County opened up into a 2-3 zone that time, really. Much like they saw the first half, but Summertown was unable to handle the ball correctly. Didn't get back on defense then. Heather Prater with a pretty pass inside of Benita Warden, who's really starting to rack up the points. And I believe that's her 17th point as we put it on the night. And now Waynesboro shifts to the 1 2 2 half court trap. So Coach David Burr really using this as an experimental game now that they work on all these different defenses. Have another floor mistake by Summertown. Waynesboro out on the break. Pass from Prater to Hastings. She blows the layup, but another fine looking play. Shelly Curtis drags off the rebound for Summertown, bringing it down the floor. Summertown working the perimeter to have four girls on the perimeter. Curtis drifts into the high post, lays up a five-foot jump shot. She slipped in on him. She was out on the perimeter and all at once. She just streaked for the free throw line. They hit her, made it 45-23. Summertown's down by 22 with 6.45 remaining third period. Marcia Davis puts one up. It's off. Rolls out of bounds. Lisa Pilkington comes in for Vanessa Bailey for the Summertown girls as Summertown comes on the attack. Summertown also showed a half-court travel of their own, so Coach Bobby Wark is trying to apply a little defensive pressure here to create some turnovers and try to fire his team up. Shelly throws over the zone, finds Lisa in the corner, doesn't quite get the shot to go down, battle for the rebound, Prater comes away with it. They get it back to her, and now they're setting up their offense. Summertown in the 1 2 2 half court trap. There's a collision in mid court, the ball going out of bounds. Referee rules it's off White's foot, so it'll be Waynesville's ball. 6 16 remaining in the third quarter, and score 45 to 23 in favor of Waynesville. Frederick running the attack for the Wayne County girls. Over to Davis. Davis has the ball stripped by Curtis. Curtis running down the left side. Puts up a two-foot jump shot. It's no good. Taking off by Pilkington. No good. Benita Wharton brings the ball off the board. And has the ball slapped out of her hand. Summertown set the inbound. Left front court. Curtis 
running the attack from Summertown. They're running high post with four girls on the perimeter. Curtis and Miller working outside, out the 20-foot line. Over on the high post to Leanne. Leanne puts up a 10-foot jump. As a fine pass from the point guard, Carissa Miller that time, spotting the seam in the zone. Leanne flashed to the middle. That'll make that zone collapse a little bit and make it easier for her to make the passes to the wing if Leanne can make that shot. That's Leanne's first basket of the night. Give her three points. Vane right. back on the other end. Gets the ball in to Leanne, um, excuse me, to Benita Warden on a very similar play, and Benita turns around, throws it in once again. She's really a fine offensive threat in there for Vane Bridget Davenport showing some offense, drives the middle. She picks up a foul on Christy Skelton, who reached in. That's her third foul. The only Waynesboro player in any kind of foul trouble. But Vanessa Bailey back in for the Summertown girls. Summertown set the inbound underneath their basket. One, two. She got into Curtis. Curtis back on the low post to Leanne. Leanne, 10 foot turnaround. That's two consecutive for Leanne. 27-47, 508, third period. These Wayne County girls are ranked in the top 10 of the state. Hovering around the fifth spot, have been all year. Intercepted by Pilkington, Pilkington driving the length of the floor. Has her batted out by Wayne County. Summertown inbounds. Summertown showing a little more life after the halftime down there. Coach Bobby Wyatt, after his girls got a little breather here, look like they come out ready to play a lot more. Once again, we're still having a problem getting the ball inbounds. At least we are showing a little life, getting the ball in Leanne, who's making those shots, and we are jumping out, contesting the passes. So that's one of the keys to a game like this. You've got to keep on fighting, even though you're down like that. It's, it's a character-building game for a future team, especially one that's as young as this. It's Heather Pratter. She lines up, and she shows everybody in, on our audience out here now why she's one of the top-rated point guards in the district with shooting like that. It's her 10th point on the night. Leanne puts one up, 15-footer, rolls off no good. Wayne County on the run. Girl wide open, lays it up. Skelton misses. But Vanessa Bailey brings the ball off with a strong rebound. They really got up the floor good that time, Ed. Yeah, we're hustling back. On Waynesboro gets the ball down the floor very quick, as we've seen all night. And many times tonight, they've had three-on-one, four-on-one. And that one for us just hasn't been able to control them. That time we got down the floor and hustled with them. So that's what we got to do. Just keep on battling hard as we see Lisa Pilkington diving out of bounds for that ball. But wasn't quite able to save it. As long as we get a good effort like that in this situation, we'll be okay. Wayne County bring the ball up the floor over to Pratter. Heather Pratter 25 feet out on low post Benita Warson. And we have a foul on Lee Ann. That picks up her second person of the night. And that's the first team foul for the Summertown girls in this half. Amy Blackwood sets a check back in for the Summertown girls. Lisa Pilkerton will rest this spell. Amy's got four fouls. Let's point that out there, buddy. So she's going to have to be careful on the defensive end. And someone like Amy, that's difficult because she's really counting on as one of the premier defensive players on this team often giving the fastest player on the other team to guard. So let's see how she handles the pressures. Leanne gets the ball in the middle, takes a power dribble and turns and lets the five-foot jumper go in. That's six points for Leanne in less than two minutes. It gives her seven on the night. She only had one point at the halftime. A one low post skeleton has the ball blocked. Off of Wayne County girl, give it to Summertown. 3-17, third period. 50 to 28. 50-29. 50-31. Shelly Curtis on a fine individual move there. She, they cleared it out. Let her take her man one-on-one. -on -one. A call play by Coach Bobby Wark as she dribbles in, puts up the nice left-handed jumper, which she's been hitting pretty regular this game if she can get it in that close. There's a long rebound. Comes out. Summertown not able to track it down. Waynesboro retrieves, sets up their offense, gets it into Warden, and once again, she's automatic in there. She's really off to a fine night, one of the better nights she's had this year, I guess. 21 points with 2.35 remaining third period. Waynesboro switched to that man-to-man -man defense, try to create a little pressure and get this game going back up and down. 
We've Coming got a foul, foul here. Rebound. It's on Curtis. That's Curtis's fourth personal. Shelly Curtis. Like she's a victim. She's a little bit shorter than these other girls jumping into her on the back side. Well, that's a more of a frustration foul, I believe, on Shelly's part. Uh, we got number 10, Bridget Davenport. She's going to be coming in, replacing Leanne Corbin. Summertown going with a smaller, quicker lineup to try to offset this defense that Wayne's Rush playing. But that's really going to put a lot of challenge on these smaller girls inside as these big Waynesboro girls have been pounding that board all night. But when you shoot like Marcia Davis, just let that one fly. There won't be a lot of rebounds coming off the board there. Curtis, another floor mistake. Summertown has, what, 20 turnovers, reckon, Eddie? We, we're not keeping up with that one, but I believe they're probably around that 20 turnover mark there. They, they really had their problems handling the ball tonight. That's a classic case there. Like we said, they're going to have a problem with these bigger girls. Ryder just comes down and lost up a lot of pass that we're not able to even get close to, but it falls right into the hands of Warden, who throws in their 23rd point tonight. Miller on the right wing. She drives. No, couldn't quite get the shot to go down. The ball comes off to Bailey, and she's going to be fouled this time. I believe Warden picked up the foul. Her first person of the night. She has, what, 23 points, one personal foul. And she's a good combination. She's been all over those boards tonight, too, Charlie. She's really hustling to get her position so she can establish those rebounds without picking up any kind of foul. That's two team fouls on the Wayne County team this half. Another turnover. Wayne County on the break. Ball stolen by Davenport. Curtis. Summertown breaking back. Don't have the numbers. Vanessa Bailey sets up. Back over to Shelley. 135, Wayne County into man to man. Lee Ann, 18 foot jump, it's no good. Taken off board by Christy Skelton. Over to Marcia Davis. They on the run. Over on the back court, they're intercepted by Curtis. Curtis running down the left side. Lays up, puts one up, no good. Bailey takes it off, no good. And Wharton comes out with a rebound. Wayne County running. Puts up a shot, and Leanne picks up her third personal foul. 110 remaining in the third period, 56-31. Leanne Corbin picks up her third personal. With 110 remaining in the third quarter, and Amy Blackwood has four fouls. Coach Bobby White substitute number 14, Lisa Pilkington, in to try to save Amy for that fourth quarter there and possibly mount up one last-ditch run here. But with a big 26-point lead, it may be a... A big hole to climb out of, considering the caliber of this Waynesboro team. Marcy Davis sinks two free throws, 58-31. Curtis working 30 feet out, one minute exactly in the quarter. Throws to the low post to Leanne, balls over her head. Another four mistake. These switching defenses that Waynesboro has employed all night, they're not able to, Summerhound isn't able to recognize them and set up a, an offense to attack those as well because they're switching so many times down the floor. That time they're back in the man-to-man -man playing it hard. Hilkington brings the ball off the board for the Summertown girls. 35 seconds. Curtis working one-on-one, -on -one, puts up a 10-foot jump. It's no good. Christy Skelton clears the board, bad pass, picking off by Lisa Pilkington. Has her pocket pick, pitches her back up into Curtis on the high post to Leanne. Leanne has the ball blocked by Juanita Wharton, and she picks up her second personal foul. So Leanne will go to the line to shoot two with 21 seconds remaining in the quarter. Leanne's had a good third quarter. They come out and got the ball into her in the lane. She's turning and faced up on the taller Waynesboro girls and got the ball over their outstretched arms. And she scored seven or eight points this quarter, so she's probably been our only offense that we've really seen this quarter thus far. As she eyes the mark and nails the first free throw. Her seventh point of the quarter and eighth point for the night. At the line to try to complete the two-point play. And she does. 58 to 33 and a 33, Carissa Miller will replace Leanne. Not Bobby not wanting Leanne to pick up her fourth foul because he's got enough in foul trouble as of right now. And the Warthin left loose underneath, lays one up and in. 
Uh, Anita Warson. Uh, seven seconds to go to the main quarter, and Shelly Curtis sees the mark. She's looking to get a shot off. She lets a three-pointer fly. It's it in there. 35-footer at the end of the third quarter, Summertown 36, Wayne County 60. Raised, vital, and aluminum siding offer quality work at a price you can afford to pay. Call today for a free estimate. Donald, Gene, or Keith will stop your house painting worries forever with vinyl or aluminum siding, storm doors and windows, seamless and aluminum gutters, and vinyl shutters. We also have patio covers. Ray's Construction is an Alcoa siding dealer. Phone 762-0610 or 762-1909 for a free estimate without obligation. Bird Insulation, Highway 43, Mount Pleasant. If you're building a new home or repairing an existing house, you need to be in touch with Bird concerning your insulation. They're qualified to handle TBA projects also. Bird also offers radon testing, testing and mitigation at your site. For the best quality work with the most experience, contact L.W. Bird, Ricky Thompson, or your local Large County representative, Doyle Perry, to fulfill your large your insulation needs. 379-5562. Fourth quarter about to set start. Wayne County put the ball in play. They brought several of their bench in to play this fourth quarter. Grinders running the attack on the high post to Rochelle. Rochelle puts one up. Over to Summertown, Shelly Curtis. Over to Carissa Miller, 18-foot jump. It's no good. Taking off for Wayne County. And Katrina Rochelle takes steps. Summertown basically coming back with our starting lineup with the exception of Bridget Davenport, who's in there in the replacement. Amy Blackwood, who has four fouls. Bridget spots up from the free throw on the line. Let's the ball go. Doesn't go, but that's a Bailey on the offensive board. That's her eighth rebound on the night. She comes up for two more points. She has four points on the night with eight rebounds. She's battling those tall girls from Wayne County. Ball goes in the middle to Rochelle. Rochelle working around. Ball comes off to Black. Bailey. Shelly Curtis working front court. Over to Miller. Miller takes about a 16-foot jump. Ball taken off the board to Wayne County. And we have a foul on number 33, Teresa Miller. That's her third personal of the night. That's the fourth team foul. So on the next foul, so Wayne County will be in the bonus situation, shoot the one and one. Amy Blackwood, number double zero, comes back in. She's replacing Carissa Miller, and she'll be guarding the wing position. There's Four a steal by Summerhound. One of the few. And we have a foul on Meanne Grinder. On the drive, that's the fourth team foul, so the next foul, each team will be in the bonus. 6.51 remaining in the ball game, 60 to 38. Curtis working 30 feet out. Davenport got an 18 foot jump shot. 60 to 40. Bridget's getting a lot more playing time as of lately. Put in mainly for some scrappy defensive ability, but she's shown she can nail that shot. Left wide open, able to get it off as she did that time. We have a foul on the drive on Shelly Curtis. Now it'll be the fifth personal on Shelly Curtis. She fouls out with 26-26 remaining in the ball game with 20 points several rebounds and done a fine job working floor tonight but she's just out man from the start yeah she really was having problems with that, that wayne county pressure as the summertown whole team has had problems with it and she's really done all she could we said she'd have to have an outstanding game but got caught with a couple of early fouls there and didn't get to play as aggressively as shelly likes to play so that limited her, but when she was in there, she was really doing the job, as she always does for these Summertown Eaglets. Alicia Benefield working a point for the Summertown girls tonight over on the right wing to Davenport. Davenport puts up about an eight-foot jump shot. 
Nothing but net. Bridget looked like she may be wanting to take up the slack at Shelly left off there. She drives the baseline with a pretty move going by Wayne. From low post to Wayne County girl, Stephanie Cook, into the ball game. Leanne Corbin picks up her fourth foul, so somehow really mounting up some foul trouble here. We got Shelly done foul out, Amy Black over with four, and now Leanne Corbin picks up four. Carissa Miller has three, so we're really doing our share of fouling tonight. Is, and Waynesboro really burning us on that line, too. Katrina Rochelle at the line to complete the two free throws. It's in, it's out. We have a tie ball. Goes to Summertown. What about this alternating possession, Eddie? We haven't talked about it in a couple of telecasts. What do you think about it? Well, I think it does speed the ball game up. It takes a lot of time to organize a jump ball with everyone jockeying for position. And many times, especially in girls' games, they like to reach out and tie that ball up. But in boys' games, you don't see that many. I've, I, I'm not really in favor of an alternating possession. What I would like to see done if a ball is tied up, I'd like to see the defensive team get the ball myself because they worked hard to... You know, of course, a, a time situation there, they ought to be rewarded for it. And a lot of times you get right back to the offense. And in key situations late in the game, that can really affect the outcome. That would be my rule if I had a chance to vote on it. I'd give it to the defensive team rather than taking turns with it like that. Summertown on the attack again over to Davenport. Puts up a 10-foot jumper, two in a row. Put the lead back to 19. Rick keeping it right about the 20 point lane for about the last four or five minutes. Someone has moved to a matchup zone or a man to man. I can't tell which one it is really, but we're getting out in those passing lanes contesting it some. But that's the Bailey going for the rebound there, but a foul is going to be whistled on number 11, Meehan Grinder, and one of the few Waynesboro players to accumulate three fouls, and that is her third foul that time. She can't believe it out there on the floor. There was contact made, but. but. You don't think Wayne County thinks they never foul. I know their boys do, but I didn't know their girls <laughs> felt that way. Let's <laughs> hope no one from Wayne County views this telecast for that comment. <laughs> well, we know we're going to have a knockdown drag out when the boys game starts, so we just yeah. going to get ready for it. I guess every, everybody can't believe they actually get out and foul someone, but. Ball comes off the board to Wayne County, 450 remaining in the ball game. Summertown in a tight man-to-man -man defense, almost had the five-second count. Ball rolls across the floor, picked up by Wayne County. Back over to the other side to Katrina Rochelle, and she's fouled by Alicia Benefield, picks up her first personal. So Katrina, Katrina, Rochelle goes to the line to shoot the one and one. Rolls off no good. Benefield comes off for the rebound, drives the length of the floor over to Davenport. Davenport making her move. She likes that right corner. She's isn't? looking for that shot. She's hit two in a row and I don't blame her. I'd be looking for it myself there. If they can get her the ball, I believe she'll try to pull up and shoot it again. Plainsboro able to create a turnover. Uh, Meehan Grinder dribbling down to get it. But she she is fouled by Bridget Davenport. That's Bridget's third foul as she comes into it. Scoreboard showing she has four foul. We only have her down for three there. Got some substitutions coming into the ball game. Number 14, Lisa Pilkington back into the game. Jennifer Self, number 24, is in the ball game. For the first time tonight, the ball goes up, battling around on the boards. Off of Summertown, the hustling Summertown girls. Over to get to bring the ball into the backcourt. Pilkington over to Benefield. Benefield running the attack. Working 25 feet out over to Pilkton. Pilkton puts up an 18-footer, no good. Davenport brings the ball off the board, puts it up, no good. Ball tipped out by Wayne County. Regina Martin tips the ball out. 
Let's point out that all these girls that you see on the floor now are freshmen for Summertown. Last year they were playing junior high ball, but forced into action immediately on the Summertown High School team. So this is a team you'll see for many years down the road here at Summertown. Summertown gets three shots. First time tonight they've had three shots. Yeah. One opportunity. Back, back over to Blackwood, puts up a fourth shot, and we'll have a foul on the rebound on number 53, Katrina Rochelle. Picks up her first personal. She's had quite a bit of playing time. It's only her first personal foul. We have number 30, Mandy Mathis, coming in for the Wayne County Wild Kittens. 3:34 remaining in the ball game. 63 to 45 is Bridget Davenport to the line. It's off, no good. Summertown hustling. Bailey brings the ball off once, twice. Comes off to Black. Benefield, Benefield over to Davenport. Down court working the baseline, lets the ball roll out of her hand. These girls are showing that they have a real quickness about them. They're getting in there and beating Mainsville to the spot and establishing a little position. Therefore, they were, they were able to get four shots the last time down the floor. The only problem, we weren't able to convert any of them. So they'll come along with a little more experience and playing time there. Wayne County works it under the basket. Puts up about a two-foot jump shot. 65-45, three minutes remaining. Over on a high post, puts one up, it's no good. Vanessa Bailey picks up her first personal foul, Eddie. Vanessa, I, I can't believe that's her first one. She's been out of that boy, she's banging all night. I don't know how many points she has. She's got 11 rebounds, Charlie, and that's a nice word for anybody in there underneath the board like that. She has five points to go along with those rebounds. Huh. She's been in there battling all night. Huh. She's gaining much needed experience. Tournament time, what, two weeks away, three it, weeks it's away? It's not very far at all. We've got, uh, we play Waynesboro one more time, we play Clifton one more time, so, and after that, all of them will be in the tournament, so. It's rapidly approaching. I, I don't guess you can call her a true freshman anymore because she's pretty well got a season under her belt here. We expect her to play just like the other veterans we have out there now. She's been a, been a leader since about the middle of the year. She's picked up the experience and been doing real well working the ball games, clearing the boards, helping Lee in and Shelly Curtis in the game on the boards and on the scoring end also. Yeah, she's, she's had several double-figure games for us this year, also double figures in rebounds on one of our TV games that we've done. So, But for a lot of good playing to come from Vanessa, she'll be counted on in a tournament a lot. Waynesboro's got a bunch of substitutions in. They get the ball number 24, Amy Butler, is underneath the goal, and I didn't catch it. Was that Lisa Pilkington? Lisa Pilkington picked up her second personal foul of the night. Lisa's had a fine night coming off the bench for Summerhouse. She's had four rebounds and to go along with two steals. Talking about Blackwood, I mean, uh, Vanessa Bailey again. I looked a couple of years down the road for her to be all district player, maybe all mid-state before she leaves Summertown. Well, that's very true, Charlie. She definitely shows the ability to have some uh, quickness, pretty good shooting touch, and the desire to get out of there and do the jobs. So. If you can just stay with it and avoid some injury there, we can look for something like that out of her. Wayne County puts up two shots. Miller comes out with the ball for Summertown. Ball rolls off to Wayne County, back to Summertown. 205, 69 to 45. Miller into Benefield, Leisha Benefield working the point, 25, 30 feet out. Cut off the head over to Pelkerton on the left. Back to Benefield, 20 foot, we give her three. She wanted to show everybody she could hit that three point shot. I'm glad to see Elisa take that shot. I know she's a good shooter. She kind of reluctant to shoot a lot of times when she comes in, so if we get a little confidence in her, maybe we'll see her taking that shot more often when she gets a chance. Number 42, Tanya Rippey comes into the Waynesboro lineup, and number 11, Mia Ann Grinder, she's going to the bench. That's probably all of her action for tonight. So, so we've got all substitutes in there now. Not, people don't get to see a lot of action other than Carissa Miller for Summertown. Puts up another one, it hits the rim, no good. Ball goes out of bounds. 132 remaining. Wayne County's built a 21-point lead. 
Summertown on full court press. Wayne County breaks it easily. Holds up 25 feet out into the high post. Floor mistake. Give it to Summertown. Over to Benefield. 118, 117. Summertown working for the inside shot. Pilkington on the baseline to Miller. Back out to Benefield. She wants another one. This one's a little short. Summertown, though, goes to me. They ran into a full court man to man pressure defense. Trying to get these girls some little experience here. And Jason, they must have to come in late in the ball game. They want to see what they can accomplish. And they force the floor mistake through the Waynesboro point guard there. 58 seconds to go in the ball game. Waynesboro with a 69 to 48 lead on Summertown. Waynesboro girls were up their record to. Five and one in district play. Summer have a follow of two and four. And we'll need a key victory in, in over Clifton or uh, Waynesboro over there in order to avoid that one playoff game as we talked about in order to get automatically into the regional tournament. Now as Waynesboro continues their quest to catch top rated Collinwood when they have to visit there later on in February. Teresa Miller just picks up her fourth personal. So that'll send Regina Martin to the line to shoot the one and one. First one bounce high and drops through. 70 48. Martin throws the mark. High arching shot. They never missed two. Charlie, even the subs hit free throws for Waynesboro. I tell you, they must have some fine free throw shooting teacher over there. They do a lot of practicing on it one. Over Pilkton. Pilkton, 18-foot set. Give it to her. 71-50. Wayne County up the floor on the fast break. Ball goes into Mathis. Mathis puts one up, comes off to Wayne County. We have a foul on Bridget Davenport. Foul number four. 15 seconds remaining. There's Amy Butler at the line. It's good. Second one. Rolls off. No good. Give it to White. 14 seconds. 72-50. Benefield over to Pilkington. Pilkington 18 foot out. They went to her two in a row. She picked up six points this quarter. As the ball game comes to the end, Summertown 52, Wayne County 72. Scott's Grocery, George and Kim offer full line of groceries every day. BP brand gas, cigarettes, and tobacco. We make sandwiches of all types. We specialize in pizza, and we make pizza in a variety of combinations. You can call ahead or order while you wait at Scott's Grocery, 964-2306, located in Summertown. Countryside, good and plenty restaurant. Country cooking at its best. We house cut our meats daily and serve fresh vegetables. We specialize in family-style cooking. We offer spaghetti, meatballs, and steak, and we make our pizza from scratch. So for a good, wholesome breakfast, lunch, or dinner, come to Countryside Good and Plenty Restaurant in Summertown or call 964-3368 for orders to go. And we're open at 5 a.m. each day. Eddie, what's the scoring total for the summer for the girls for this Summertown team? For Summertown, Leanne Corbin had 10 points. Vanessa Bailey, 5 points, 11 rebounds. Amy Blackwood had two points. Carissa Miller, two. Lisa Pilkington off the bench with five points. Lisa Benefield, three. Bridget Davenport, another fine game off the bench with six points. And Shelly Curtis, once again, led the way with Summertown with 20 points. For Waynesboro, Ginger Hastings had four. Heather Pratt, 10. Marcia Davis, 11. 
Amy Butler off the bench with seven. Christy Skelton, two. Katrina Rochelle off the bench with nine. Regina Martin had two. Stephanie Cook, two. And Tanya Ripley with 12 points. And Benita Warden led the way with 25 big points and numerous rebounds underneath the board there to give Waynesboro the win tonight. Well, that's the girls' game with Waynesboro with a 20-point lead over the Summertown Eagle Eagles.